Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today I want to talk about some very important things. Yes, I want to talk about gold and why Muslims right now, and not only Muslims, but non-Muslims also need to start buying gold. Why at this point? And so I'm going to summarize a lot of things. And so I'm not going to be absolutely producing evidence for everything I say because I've already done that in the past for a lot of things. A lot of things I still need to talk about. So Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let me start off by saying that uh, I gave this talk, uh, I think in 2018, Paper Money versus Gold and the Future of Islam and the Collapse of the Global Economy, Part 1. I recommend everyone to go and listen to that talk of mine after this talk of mine. Okay, so that's, that's one thing that I wanted to uh, start off with from the very beginning. Then uh, the second thing I want to start with is just listen, I want you to just listen to what's happening, okay? Just listen to what's happening, and then, inshallah ta'ala, I'll make some comments, and then we're going to talk about the the need, uh, and we're going to listen to this person, uh, Robert, I forget his last name, but he's really an expert. He wrote this very good book I read a um, long time ago, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, anyway, so let's listen to this, right? To help prevent coronavirus from even entering the state, are stopping drivers to help prevent coronavirus from Troopers are stopping drivers to help prevent coronavirus from even entering the state of Florida. Checkpoints are going up looking for drivers coming in from hot zones. This is Eric Sandoval is on I-95 tonight with more. The governor says this new checkpoint is going to go on I-95, but a little bit farther north than where we are near the Georgia border. He says it's going to be similar to one in operation already in the panhandle, and it's going to basically have the same goal to keep the coronavirus out. This is what coming into Florida on Interstate 10 in the Panhandle area looks like right now. Drivers are forced to exit at a truck way station, where for 24 hours a day, FHP troopers look for drivers coming in from the coronavirus hot zone of Louisiana. Thank you. There's a fear that... So, at some places in the United States, there's the National Guard, some places the troops put into places, especially watching out from people from, well, quote and quote, watching out for people from New York or under the excuse of, we want to make sure New Yorkers are not going to other parts of the U.S. to spread this virus. So they have people, uh, the, you know, state troopers in I-95, and then they have the National Guard in other places. You can look this up too. So this is where things are going. Why are things going in this way? Uh, and, and also, I want to talk about something very important from a spiritual perspective that needs to be clear in the mind of the Muslims especially. Okay? So... Looking at the holistic picture, okay, again, let's listen to this news. It concerns that cases could explode in L.A., D.C., Atlanta, Dallas, and Detroit. Two major U.S. companies teaming up to build tens of thousands of ventilators and President Trump extending social distancing guidelines until April 30th. But some still not listening. A Florida megachurch holding packed services. Tonight, the pastor under arrest. The Navy hospital ship arriving in New York City, sailing past the Statue of Liberty. And astonishing scenes in Central Park. An emergency field hospital being built as facilities are overwhelmed. Everyone describes all the critical care units as war zones um, because that's what it looks like. Tonight, the chaos at the epicenter. The millions of Americans out of work. What to do about the wave of bills due in just 48 hours? And a devastating announcement tonight for the nation's largest department store chain. Plus, why some Amazon and delivery workers are walking off the job. The race for a treatment, the FDA approving a malaria drug for emergency use, and the first U.S. hospital to use a potential new blood treatment. And the new test that gives results not in days, but in minutes. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening, everyone. The latest projections of how many people we could lose to coronavirus are hard to fathom. 100 to 200,000, we've been told by the White House, and that, believe it or not, is best case. And tonight, in the country where some of you are watching us under virtual lockdown, inside... So the best case scenario is 100 to 200,000 people will die in best case scenario. So that's, that's what we're looking at, okay? Now, how do we reconcile? How do we understand the situation that we are in, right? How do we understand the situation we find ourselves in with this, okay? And this is very important to understand. 
in order to understand really what is happening and how you have to Islamically understand what is going on. So let's start with something a little bit comical, okay? Believe it or not, Trump said this in one of the campaigns of his first uh, election. So, um, we have to remember, this is, let me just uh, preface this, because people are beginning to understand that this idea of the coronavirus was out there. And then, I'll, 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 let me actually uh, go ahead and show some aspects of that right now, right? Just so that I can talk about this in, in, a, in a broad sense that will actually make sense, okay? So, um, so there is this song that was uh i guess uh published uh in 2013 that talks about coronavirus in 2020 So you have it there, a song from 2013 talking about coronavirus in 2020. Uh, let me give you another example. This is an example that's well known. I got this uh, letter from this sister. Uh, this is the book Dean Coons, right? Uh, Eyes of Darkness. We all, you already know this, so I'm just going to actually just show you the page, okay? Where you can see uh, it talks about... Uh, you know, Wuhan 400, right? Wuhan 400 uh, would be a perfect weapon. And then it goes on to talk about in around 2020, a severe uh, pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe. So this book was written about 30 years ago, but it has information like this, right? So what do we do? About, how do we understand this? So the way we understand this is... This verse of the Quran. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَذُوُّ الشَّيَاطِينَ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, this is how for every prophet and in every prophet's era, there are shayateen that are the enemies of the prophets. Amongst the humans and the jinns, يُوهُ بَعْضَهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضَ So human beings giving inspiration to the jinns and jinns giving inspiration to human beings okay so the shaitan zuhrif al qawl with golden words golden words these songs they're golden words they come in novels zuhrif al qawl with you know in speech uh, over here it says uh, in delusion he's actually giving the translation but he's not using the exact meaning zuhrif means gold right Zuhraf al-Qawla Ghurura, right? Uh, 
decorative speech in delusion. So that's actually a correct translation. Zuhraq al qawl al ghurura in delusional words that sound beautiful, that sound like golden words, like the golden rules to live by. Right? Walaw sha'a Allah, walaw sha'a, if Allah had willed, Rabbuka, by your Lord, if your Lord had willed, ma fa'alu, they wouldn't be able to do any of the things that they're inspiring one another with. No, they would not be able to do it. But Allah allows this. فَزَرْهُمْ مَا يَفْتَرُونَ Allah says, just leave them to which they يَفْتَرُونَ for which they invent. Let them invent the things that they make. Let them make this coronavirus. But, but, even though we know the shayateen are behind this, but Allah is behind what the shayateen are doing. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ النَّبِيِّ الْأَذُوَّ وَالشَّيَاطِينَ وَالْإِنسِ يُهُوا بَعْدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْدِ They inspire one another. With what? زُحْرَ فِي الْقَوْلِ الْغُرُورَ With golden words of delusion. And these words of, of delusion are things that they get inspired with. Let's do this. Let's do that. That's why Allah says next, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوا If Allah had wanted, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't be able to do what they're inspired one another to do. But they inspire each other in these novels, inspire each other in these songs, inspire one another. مَا فَعَلُوا They wouldn't be able to do it. But Allah says, فَزَرْهُمْ Leave them! Ignore them! Let them go! ما يفترون what they're inventing. Now, there is a narration of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم that mentions that uh, the Prophet was riding on a camel and the camel slipped. And the other companion of the Prophet, he said, woe upon shaitan for doing this. And the Prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم don't give the credit to shaitan. Don't give the credit to Shaytan. This is what this is what makes him thrive. You talk about Illuminati, you talk about the Shayateen, you talk about the Freemasons. This makes him happy. He makes him happy. This makes him happy. But instead, what did the Prophet say? When the animal slipped, say Bismillah. Give the credit to Allah. And then the Prophet said, By doing this, you will make Shaytan into a very small thing. You'll make Shaytan into a very small thing. So even though this virus was Zuhrif al-Qawl al you know, it was the beautiful ideas that they had and they were inspiring in different people's minds, just in all sorts of different people's minds, the idea of this coronavirus was coming in their minds and they were writing songs about it, writing books about it, doing other things about it. So much evidence, even from, I think there's five or six movies that are based upon this uh, virus, so on and so forth. You can look that up. Uh, I was going to actually talk about that, but I didn't pull that up. But the point is that shaitan does what shaitan does. And Allah allows shaitan to do it. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكْ If Allah had, if your Rabb wanted, مَا فَعَلُوا They wouldn't have been able to do it. And the interesting thing is the word Rabb used in this verse of the Quran. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكْ And if your Lord, your Lord, meaning Allah is, uh, well, allow this. Rabb means the nurturer. The one who nurtures you, the one who makes you grow, the one who brings you into maturity. Allah is just going to use the, the tricks of shaitan to make you more mature. I'll give you an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let 9-11 happen. It allowed the Muslim community to become more mature. We became stronger in our insight. We became stronger in our iman. We became stronger in understanding what's happening in the world. Many people woke up. Just like many people will wake up through this virus. Because now they're sitting at home and thinking about why am I stuck at home? You know, what is this nonsense happening in the world? And people will wake up. And so, what shayt in the shayt in the kay the shaytan the 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 kay the makr the plotting and the planning of shaytan is weak and it backfires. And I've already said whatever the Republican Party is involved in, it will usually backfire because they're the ashab al fil. Alam tara kaifa faala rabbuka bi ashab al fil. Have you not seen what the people of the elephant, the Republican Party, what 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 Allah did with them? Whatever they plotted and planned, it backfired. Uh, did you not see that their their cave it went 
the wrong way because when you especially you know deal with nature the the uh, when you try to uh, to 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 so I was saying if you play with nature then you know the virus goes in many different directions and and look <clears throat> and the shayateen they know because the plagues have come from Allah before and the plagues because they've come before the shayateen they know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans to do certain things anyway. Let me give you one example of what I mean, okay? I'm just going to only read the English because uh, because it'll make it easier. Easier. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Muhajireen, there are five things with which you will be tested. Which you will be tested. In which the Muslims were tested before because plagues came before. The, the Quran mentions it. O oh, Muhajirin, there are five things with which you will be tested, and I seek Allah's refuge with them, lest you live to see them. Immorality never appears amongst a people, to such an extent that if they commit it openly, but plagues and diseases that were never known among the predecessors will spread among them. So, see, the shaitan, Iblis, he knows many of the sunnas of Allah. He knows how Allah operates. More than me and you. Much more than me and you. And he, he pushes people in a direction where he wants to take credit for the, for the action and the reaction. Meaning, he wants to take credit. I took them towards indecency. Let me also now pretend I also am in control of Allah's punishment that comes after that. So he puts it in people's minds to build this virus and every, you know, these artists are talking about this, even though that is all part of Allah's plan. All of that is part of Allah's plan. And so you have to keep in mind that how things work from a Quranic perspective. Shaitan is, you know, uh, the shaitan has leave till the day of judgment to do whatever he wants. And he knows how Allah's rules operate. Like just like we begin to know a little bit about the physical world, how it operates, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The same way Shaitan knows the mo the the at the moral level how Allah operates. Okay, and <coughs> he himself is the greatest disaster example of that. Okay, so Shaitan tries to make it look like he was completely in charge of whatever was happening with the viruses and the plagues and so on and so forth, whereas that is not 100% the case. Yes, yuhu ba'dahum ila ba'd. They, they inspire one another. And, and shaitan inspires based upon what he knows of what Allah will do. So that his results look fruitful. So there's many examples of this. But because today actually the topic is to talk about gold and silver and Muslims need to be buying gold and silver. And as, as I mentioned in the beginning of this talk, I had talked about this almost two years ago where I had given a talk that, you know, paper money versus gold money. But today I'm saying, please forward my talk, subscribe to my channel, uh, forward my talk to as many Muslims as possible so they can understand the need to the need to uh, buy gold, okay? Now, let's go on to the next aspect of this. I already talked about this, so I'm going to let this go. I already talked about this, so I'm going to let this go. Now, this is the latest Economist magazine. Uh, before I talk about gold, let me actually talk about uh, the latest, uh, the latest, so here you have a chain on a dog with a chain on a man with a chain of this invisible hand on this man. So this man controls the, the way this man controls this dog. This invisible hand or this powerful hand now controls this man. This is where the world is going. This is where world is going okay and this is going to happen because they're going to use technology they're going to put things into us by 
you know, just like after 9-11, they said you have to stand in, in the lines for security. And now they put security all over the world, more cameras than ever. In the name of security, they've created these databases and everything that they need to know to catch anybody, pinpoint anybody, so on and so forth. Now the next level of that is taking place. For the shay the big shaitan, you know, uh, let me share with you something interesting. Uh, Iqbal, Alama Iqbal has a poem called Iblis Ki Majlis Shura. Okay? And in this poem, the idea is that, you know, the time is running out. The day of judgment is coming. The day of judgment is just at hand. So what am I going to, what is shaitan going to do? He takes a shura. Okay, do this and do this and do this. But the point is shaitan knows time is running out. Time is running out. And he is working and operating based upon knowing that time is just running out for him. His time is out. His time is running out. And he has to pull the biggest tricks in his hat now that the time is running out. Okay. And so one of them, one of those tricks that one of those the jali tricks is this type of new world order, this type of uh, order where man is completely controlled and humiliated, so you can take as many of the human beings to the hellfire, and you can either be part of it or you can resist it. Okay. Uh, now, this is the main thing I wanted to share with you today: is this conversation that takes place between the um this you'll see who this person is okay if your roof is over seven years old you may qualify for a unique metal roofing opportunity watch this imp sounds quantitative easing to infinity but my next guest says quantitative easing this is something the federal government has done which is that we'll take as many assets and print basically to print as much money unlimited quantitative easing uh, basically is to buy out the U.S. government, to take control of the U.S. government, and therefore its people, okay? Just like the magazine on The Economist, okay? So uh, just keep this in mind. This is not a, an example of capitalism. It's corrupt capitalism. He is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and his latest, Who Stole My Pension? How to Stop the Looting, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, what an honor to have you back on the show at such a pivotal time. Nice to see you. you know, I, I, I always gush love and admiration for you and Kitco because uh, you guys have been I know I was telling the truth, but you're not lying to people. That's another way of saying it. You know, it's you've been keeping people aware. So I thank you and Kitka what you do. We're trying, to, we're trying to keep people woke here, Robert. That's right. And, um, you know, it's thanks to having guests like you on. And uh, I was excited to get your 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 thoughts. I've been following all your Twitter action all week. You've been very vocal and very upset about what the, the Fed's been doing here. Um, let's talk about, you know, what you've dubbed here as corrupt capitalism. Well, it's uh, I don't doubt the pandemic is real. I don't doubt that coronavirus is real. I don't doubt it's dangerous. I'm probably target market for the coronavirus, you know, simply because I've had pneumonia three times. I had malaria. I had a diving accident where I blew my lungs out, you know, I embolized. So I'm a I candidate. So, so I'm just as concerned about the coronavirus, but I think it's a sleight of hand. It's called, you know, in that book, uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island, Henry Griffin wrote about the mandrake mechanism, where mandrake's the magician. And so what the magician does, he has everybody so afraid of this thing called a virus, which I say is real, as they steal your money and they steal your wealth. And I've been, you know, chicken little, as you know, for years and years and years, advising people not to save money, but to save gold and silver, what I call God's money. And I've been chicken little for so long, I'm actually quite happy that the, the virus is here because people are saying, I should have listened to you. And I said, yeah, you should have. <laughs> Well, we're going we're to talk about gold in, in, in a second and what you're doing uh, to protect yourself here, uh, Robert. I know last time you said you were buying silver. Aren't you happy you bought it back then? Because now people can't find it. That, isn't that part of the fake? Uh, my book was also fake money before who stole my pension. And before that was conspiracy of the rich. And before that was prophecy predicting the financial crash that came in two, 2016. But it didn't come until 2020, so I was off by four years. But anyway, my concern is that there's the, the gold market's manipulated also. So, you know, there's three markets, and then there's the futures, there's the paper, you know, GLD and SLV, and then there's physical. So the price on the futures doesn't match, match the physical. Now, there's an wake up call saying, well, who's messing with my gold and silver? So that's that's what I'm saying to people. It's all manipulated. So you've got to watch Kitco and, and listen well, to Well, we, we actually, you know, broke that story this morning, you know, because I'm looking at the futures. I'm looking at the spot right before noon. There was, you know, a $45 discrepancy. I'm thinking, well, what's the real what's the real price here? And, um, you know, we saw what happened to, to silver last week. So on one hand, there's this huge silver shortage. Um, but, you know, silver's having a good day today. But last week it got, you know, was plummeted. So, you know, where is that disconnect happening? 
Well, as I wrote about my book, fake, you know, you have fake money, you have fake school teachers, they don't teach anything about money, and you have fake assets. The biggest fake is the stock market. I mean, how can it go up 1,500 points in five seconds and then come down 1,000 points in five seconds? If that's not manipulation, wake up and smell the coffee. But as you and I know, which Kitco reports on, the real problem is in the repo market and the commercial paper market. That's where the real theft is taking place right now, and the average person is watching the stock market. And my friends call up and they said, you know what, I should have bought some gold and silver. Well, it's kind of nice to be chicken little and be validated finally. But these guys now can't find any gold and silver. So I, I pray for them tonight. You, you, you also tweeted, Robert, that, you know, the moves we're seeing in gold today, you know, at one point we were up $100, just shows, um, unfortunately, lack of confidence in, in leaders and in political leaders. Well, people are finally waking up that you cannot trust our own government. You know, I was, a, I was a Marine pilot in Vietnam, and that's why I had my wake-up call in 72. I said, Kim Plessa, why am I out here shooting innocent people? <laughs> and who am I shooting them for? It's just like weapons of mass destruction. Where are they? You know, I mean, I, if people I agree with, are like Gerald Salente, man, he says it better than I do. And Jim Rickards, by the way, Jim and I are writing a book together called The Ravens. It's how do you see the future. But these guys have been saying it for years. And Danielle, the good thing is, I think people, as they sit in quarantine, as they lose their jobs or homes or pensions, their businesses and all this, I think they're waking up that they're being screwed. They've been screwed. I think that's the message, Danielle, is the American public is finally waking up. It's not capitalism. It's corrupt capitalism or criminal capitalism. And all of these stimulus packages, as record says, you know, they're not stimulus. They're just destroying everybody's economy. It's socialism for the rich as a poor middle class lose their jobs and businesses and their savings and their pensions. This is criminal what's happening. Now, that's the reason I write and I get so vehement about it, is that it's criminal what we're doing to our own people. It's criminal capitalism, not capitalism. So that's why I get so upset that there's no financial education in our schools. So what the school teach you about money? The answer is nothing. You know, if I was a school teacher, I'd be telling kids to buy silver. It's 20 bucks. Buy it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be the coolest school teacher around, Robert. Um, when you, you know, and you've been... Okay. So the point is that the only way out of that stranglehold that was on the cover of The Economist is the biggest thing, one of the biggest things you can do besides security, besides having guns, as far as currency is concerned, the Sunnah currency, Allah's currency that Allah made as a currency is gold and silver now i want to do a uh, a talk about 40 hadiths on gold and silver uh but i'm not going to obviously do it right now but i just want to share with you that this currency is so important you know that this uh i was going to talk about quantitative easing but i'm not going to do that right now again i'm not going to translate from arabic into english right now i'm just going to stick with english the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't sell gold for gold unless an equal weight. Meaning what? Don't play with currency. Don't play with the currencies. Nor silver for silver unless equal in weight. Because these are currencies of the Islamic State. Okay? Do But you could sell gold for silver or silver for gold as you like. Okay? The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, again, same thing here. Uh, let me actually show you, uh, the Prophet said, Sallallahu some silver for silver, gold for gold, barley for barley, wheat for wheat, like for like. Meaning, every the weight of everything and uh, has to be kept in mind. When and, and what Islam allows is many forms of currencies, not just a controlled paper money currency. Islam allows you to use your rice that you grow at your own house as currency to buy, for example, sugar. Islam allows you to use the natural currency of gold and silver that cannot be manipulated with inflation and hyperinflation and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and, and okay, let me also share with you this hadith, I believe. Uh, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is nothing wrong with uh, renting uncultivated land for gold, uh, uncultivated land for gold or, and silver. Meaning, the currency of that time was gold and silver. And somebody has an, there's nothing wrong with, if somebody has an uncultivated land, he rents it, he can rent it for gold and silver. And so the Prophet said, the, 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 the money of Quran and Sunnah, the Sunnah money is gold and silver. And the Prophet said, this is Imam Kathir's Bada'i wa Nihaya in his book, that there will come a time nothing will have value except for gold and silver. So this paper money is going away. This paper money is going to go away. This paper money is going to go through hyper... Listen to my last lecture about hyperinflation, the last talk that I gave, okay? Uh, this is all going to just... This paper money is not going to have any value. Muslims need to start buying gold and silver and silver is more important because it's more practical you're not going to pay everybody gold for everything that they do 
or every service that you tell somebody in the city, hey, can you take me to the other side of the city in a safe way? Can you get me to the other side of the city? You're not going to pay them in golden for every service that they do. No, that's not going to happen. That's not practical. So, okay. So I want every Muslim to send this talk of mine, this, I, this is very important that we're living in that time where the masajids, the Islamic institutions, the, the Muslim individuals, even non-Muslims, we need to put all our assets into gold and silver because this paper money is going, is going to, is going to deep, it's going to collapse like a, a house of cards. And, uh, and I will be talking about this issue more and more, inshallah ta'ala. I think the issue of money right now is more important than ever because uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, along with the elitists of the world, they are hijacking. They're hijacking the assets and the money through quanti quantitative easing. They have, are hijacking the money of the people and money of the Muslims and the hard-earned money of the Muslims. Okay? So the Prophet already gave us a solution. The Prophet already told us what to do. So we need to move in that direction. And lastly, let's do dua for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use this situation to increase our iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the truth as it is, the reality as it is. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rukna tiba wa arina al-baatila baatila wa rukna jtinaba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open uh, all the, Muslim, the eyes of all the Muslims and to be able to take right action, the proper action. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma wa hayyat lana min amrina rashada. Inshallah ta'ala. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. Thumma ameen ya Rabb. So inshallah I end here today. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله